Hello makers and welcome back to the studio. This time I wanted to share with you my five favorite go-to creation tools. It's one of those things you think about, hey, what is it the things I use most often? And sometimes you don't really even think about it. They're just the go-to tools that you have when you're working in your studio. Now I predominantly am doing collage and paper-based art. Now I do a lot of painting as well and other things, but if I'm sitting down <laughs> at my desk. Usually it's an opportunity for me to be able to work on cutting some paper and, uh, and gluing things together in an interesting way. So one of the most important things I need to have, of course, is a surface that I can work on. And I'm using this Fisker's cutting mat. Now this is a fairly large one. And I'll, I'll by the way, I'll leave uh, links in the, down in the details below for all of the tools we'll talk about if you're interested in checking them out yourselves. But the thing I love about this cutting mat is it's, it, traditionally they were known as self-healing. It's a really tough uh, product. It's the kind of thing you try, grab a utility knife, you grab any kind of blades, you can work on this. You're not going to go through this. You'd have to work really hard to cut a hole through this thing. It is layered. It's really tough. And I've had, I have cutting mats that have lasted decades, literally, and are still going. Now, sometimes they get a little worn out, if we're being honest, but it's uh, it's just an amazing surface to be able to work on. Of course, having a built-in ruler can be incredibly helpful if you're trying to line things up and, and figure out how to cut your lines. And to that point, perhaps my second favorite tool that I'm working with is my OmniGrid 24-inch ruler. Now, this is a predominantly, traditionally, a quilting tool, and it allows you to be able to put your content or you know, piece of paper or fabric and be able to see what is underneath it. Of course, you can overlap it a little bit and be able to say, you know, I have a piece of paper here. So I can come in here and I can say, you know what, let's just line things up and uh, let's cut that off. Now, what are we doing the cutting with? Well, my third favorite go-to tool, which is the Fisker's Rotary Cutter. And it, as you can see, it has a blade that extends out. And again, this is predominantly a quilting tool. But it's a rotary blade, and that blade is sharp, trust me on that. And it just allows me to say, all right, I want to be able to trim off this rag edge on my paper. I can just simply roll along my OmniGrid ruler, and easy peasy. So this is a fantastic tool. Now, I will caution you that as a razor blade. Uh, this is something to be used uh, with great respect. But this is one of my most go-to tools for cutting straight lines when I work with paper, of course, if I'm doing any kind of quilt work. This is fantastic for cutting through many layers of fabric at the same time. So there is uh, my third tool. My fourth tool is also a cutting tool, and that is a good pair of scissors. Now, check out this link if you want to know why these are my favorite scissors. And by the way, I have several different pairs of them here. You'll notice they all have some similarities. And there's kind of a, a secret as to, uh, as to why I chose these scissors. And by the way, check out the other video. It'll share with you how I arrived at this being my favorite craft scissor, all right? But anyway, there, there we are. The craft scissor is very, very important. And the last thing my major go-to is the simple glue stick. Yeah, sometimes just having a simple glue stick, it just holds everything together. The thing I like about these glue sticks, and by the way, you can check out, if you're interested in more learning everything you ever wanted to know about glues and adhesives, you can check out this other video, which is the adhesive shootout that I did. But the thing about these glue sticks, first of all, I'm just using the Amazon Basics glue stick. These things are crazy inexpensive. They're about 26 cents per stick. And you know, they'll last quite a while, depending on what you're doing. But the simple reality of these is that they do a good job of adhering paper to paper. Uh, I love the blue color, the purple color that we have here, because it allows you to see where your glue is going on so you don't have to guess and make sure you're getting thorough coverage. And it also, the, the purple just disappears. When, it, when the glue dries, the purple is gone and easy to work with, all right? So there we are, cutting mat. A straight edge that I use, again, my OmniGrid ruler is one of my favorites. My Fisker's rotary cutting blade. My scissors, <laughs> by the way, these scissors are, are some of the least expensive scissors you will probably find, and they're fantastic. And a good old just fashion glue stick. That doesn't have to be Amazon Basics. You can find your own flavor, but school glue will work for you here. All right, that's it. I just want to share with you, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get the tools that are really your go-tos. I mean, just the number of hours I've spent working with these tools is just incredible to imagine. You know, we always think, well, paintbrushes and paints and all that. Yeah, in certain cases we do, but my go-tos, these are the basic ones. Anyway, if this video was helpful to you in any way, please feel free to like it 
it really helps us out. And uh, if you want to spend some more time and learn how you can make abstract art of your very own, come join us here at Mixed Media Masters. We're dropping new concepts and videos and walk-alongs and all sorts of things every single week. And we'd love to have you come along and join us. Anyway, I'm Spider. Thanks so much for coming along today. I'll see you soon.